breaking news to tell you tonight. They're about to blow the levee near Birch Point. Yeah, Kathy Sweeney has been live in Mississippi County. Kathy, I know we were going to get the five-minute warning, and uh, did that horn sound? Where are we at right now? No, Jeff, it didn't, but I'm going to step out of the way so you can look over my shoulder here. There was no five-minute horn. We were told three minutes. Then we were told less than two, so our all eyes are focused out there in that field. If you can see some of those flashing lights in the distance, those red lights, um, straight out there and then over to the side of it, uh, more toward this land is where you're going to see what I was, dis was, was described to me as a line of fire as that section of the levee is detonated. So I'm not sure why there were no warning horns. I don't know if there'll be a one-minute horn either. Uh, but we're all focused out into that direction. Again, there's about, I'm told now, between a 9,000 and 11,000 foot section of levee will be detonated, that we would see what's described as this line of fire shooting across that horizon area. That's the actual uh, portion of the levee, the frontline levee, that will be blown. And then all this land in front of it here will, within 24 hours, fill up with water and become like a small lake taking in all that excess water and relieving pressure on those levees. I'm not sure if we're going to hear a sound when it goes off. We're all kind of in standby mode right now. Uh, all eyes to that, that section of the horizon. All right, what? Kathy, thank you. We're going to stay with you here. Um, we were expecting, as you said earlier, at 9, five-minute warning and then a uh, horn sounding, and then we were going to get another one-minute warning, again, another horn, but things have not necessarily gone as planned. So. Um, we're just going to stay with it until we see this one section that is supposed to get breached tonight. Should be any second now, if the countdown's right. Like you said a few minutes ago, she had thought it would be two minutes or less. So we don't want to pull away, obviously, from it if it's about to happen there and create basically a lake there in Mississippi County. Yeah, and a lot of people worried about the uh, area that's going to be flooded. The floodway is going to create a lake in the next 24 to 36 hours. Some folks worried about the secondary levee that's protecting East Prairie and Charleston. And, uh, Kathy, have you gotten any more indication as far as a timeline? Uh, no, again, Jeff, once this happens, I'm told that uh, Colonel Verdi Reitling, who's the commander of the Memphis District, will come over here near our camera, as a matter of fact, and give us all an update as to what happens next, so we'll be sure and ask that question. Uh, in the meantime, if you were watching at 9 o'clock, the uh, presiding commissioner of Mississippi County, Carlin Bennett, told us that there was already an effort to uh, try to help some of the farmers recoup the losses that they will receive from this flood situation because again as the Corps said this is not a man-made flood event this is a God-made flood event that the Army Corps of Engineers is managing in the best possible way. Um, we're looking out into the distance still waiting for some indication as to when this will take place. Um, not sure if we'll hear it or see it or both but uh, we are still standing by waiting. Kathy, if I may ask you, the last time this was done was 1937. What effect did it have on that floodway then? And uh, what are the long-term effects? And did it accomplish what the Corps hoped it would? You know what, Marianne? I really can't answer that question. There it is. Did you see it? It just happened. Wow, it's fast. Wow, we saw that line of fire just as it was described and then heard a series of blasts strong enough that I could feel the my inside shake, the vehicles around us shake. Uh, I'm sure it was a sound loud enough for you all to hear. That was the intentional breaching of the Birds Point levee. Kathy, that was the first blast. There'll be another one later, right? This morning, early this morning. Okay, two tomorrow more. morning. Two more. Right. That there will be two more, we're told. This is the inflow section of the levee. This is the opening where the water from the rivers will come in and make, as Jeff described, that large lake in the floodway covering 130,000 acres of farmland. And then later on, initially we were told between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., they will open the first of two outflow sections, smaller sections of the levee, and then the second outflow section uh, will be um, later on tomorrow morning. If you look out in the distance, we just saw a big spotlight. I'm not sure where it went or where it came from. A large spotlight out in the middle of the floodway area. Um, I'm not sure um, if that was an emergency official with that or not. We're still waiting to hear. 
Hey, Kathy, I Any know... Any updates? Yes, go ahead. Well, when we talked earlier today, we, we had been told that the Army Corps of Engineers would probably not blow the levee at night. You know, it's hard for us to see anything. I know it's hard for you to see anything. It's hard for viewers to see anything. And I know there was some... Uh, did the river rise too much with all the rain we've been getting to make them kind of speed up the process? Do you know? You know, Jeff, I, I asked that when I got out here, and Jim Pope told me that, again, it was uh, the water was rising at such a, a level that uh, they felt that they needed to move forward and, and do this as soon as possible. Jim's standing over here to the side. Jim, can we have you step up here for a minute? Jim Pope with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers joining us here. Jim, we just watched that line of fire, heard the series of blasts. Uh, any indication that that all went as planned? It sounded like it all went as planned, yes. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be waiting to hear and uh, get the uh, opinions of the experts, but uh, it sounded like it went like it was supposed to. Well, we, uh, I was told that uh, Colonel Reitling may be joining us shortly. What can you tell us about him coming over, maybe, and updating all of us? Well, he has operational control of the operation of the floodway, so he uh, he was at uh, right at ground zero, I'm sure, so uh, we'll, we'll find out what he has to say if he's able to come over. And can you tell us where exactly he was, where that ground zero is, or where he was when the detonation actually took place? I, I can't tell you. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's kind of tough to see what's going on out here in the dark. I'm sure he was at a very good vantage point, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you for that. We will look forward to speaking with him shortly, I hope. So, um, again, it was a, a situation where the water was rising at such a, a, a rate that it needed to be done sooner rather than later, obviously. And, again, as you just heard Jim Pogue tell us, all went as planned, it seems, from here. Uh, and again, it was really uh, an amazing sight. It happened so fast, and you saw that line of fire so quickly, that flash, and then the sound caught up with the light, and uh, and then you felt that series of, of booms, almost like uh, on the 4th of July when you're at a fireworks display outside one of those big displays, you know, and you hear that boom, and you can feel it in your chest. That's what it was like standing out here feeling those booms as we watched that portion of the levee. Um, be blown away. Now, I asked earlier how quickly will the water start to move in? Will we see a rush of water? Obviously, we can't see much of anything right now, but I'm told that within 24 hours behind me, this grassy area behind me and off into the distance will all be covered with water. Jeff, Marianne? Kathy, quickly, give us an idea. How far away are you from where that blast happened again? Uh, I was told when we got out here we were about two miles away. Now, when we first came out, we were told we would be within a one-mile distance, but, but clearly we were further than that. Uh, I was told this we were about two miles away uh, from the location. And, you know, if you look up in the sky right now, and again, I know it's, it's dark, but we can see kind of that white smoke. You know, it's after you, maybe a fire. If you've ever been out and, and covered a fire, you've seen a fire, and, and initially the smoke is black, and then it turns white as the fire is put out. Well, that's what we're seeing right now. All across that stretch of the levee is that white smoke left behind from that blast so um, you know we're we're waiting here now to see um, what we can learn about the operation did it in fact um, work the way it was supposed to and uh, and what happens next you know I'm looking in the distance and I can see more of the lights there's a white cross way out in the distance and I can actually see more of the bottom of that cross now I believe than I could before that took place so uh, I'm wondering if I'm not seeing that lowered section now of the Birds Point levee where that blast took place. But you can clearly see more lights in the distance now uh, than we saw earlier. So um, if that's an indication, yeah, um, uh, the, the, that big section of levee is down. And uh, we will wait here and, and see when the water comes and, and when the update comes from the, uh, from the commander of the Memphis District of the Corps of Engineers, guys. Kathy, thank you. And again, for those folks who may not know, this was the first breach. We know there's another breach coming uh, between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., we were told, and then the final breach, which will create the second outflow, is supposed to happen tomorrow between 10 a.m. and noon. So we're going to check back in with Kathy in a little bit. Uh, the water now flowing. You would think you might hear even the rush of water. There's right. just so much of it. It's away. just so dark, it's hard to see anything out there. Right. So we asked this question tonight, is blowing the levee a good idea? We conducted a recent web poll and the results were split right down the middle. It's definitely a subject though everybody in the heartland is talking about. Uh, I think it's going to be a big mess myself. Tell me why. Uh, there's a lot of water and I don't want to go to. Well, I mean, if they don't blow the levee, then it's going to for a lot of people out of their homes and and um, businesses and I'd much rather lose farm farmland than we would people, right? I think that it is a good idea 
spends there washing away our town to waste the farmland and for the safety of the people. Meanwhile, Governor Pat Quinn toured Carroll and other parts of southern Illinois today. And during this news conference, the governor commended officials who have kept people safe and those who have helped with sandbagging efforts. These are uh, very, very challenging times, times of crisis. I just saw the sinkholes over on the street there, and uh, some of them just developed in the last 24 hours, 48 hours. And we have to be very, very careful with public safety. That's our foremost concern, that we protect the lives of the people of our state and every other state. Most people were gone from Carroll by early this morning as Mayor Judson Childs issued a mandatory evacuation over the weekend. Police and National Guard troops are patrolling neighborhoods to make sure no one is tampering with vacant homes. And just to recap again real quickly, just a few minutes ago, right after 10 o'clock, the first portion of the Birds Point levee was blown, and we want to let you listen to that explosion one more time. Take a look at this video. We can't answer that question. There it is. Did you see it? It just happened. show lasted, as you can tell, a lot longer than the light show there. It looks like we may have slowed it down there a little bit for you so you can see what a stretch of that levee was blown up. Um, as hard as we mentioned earlier to see anything at night, and Kathy said she doesn't see any water yet, but that's a huge hole in that levee, and there will be two more blasts in the next over the next few hours. Right, into tomorrow again, creating what uh, one of the Army Corps of Engineers earlier today said would be a uh, basically a lake in the next 24 to 36 hours. I do want to point out uh, to those of you who are watching that we are uh, scrolling school closings at the bottom of your screen. We've gotten so much rain, a lot of schools have had to shut down and uh, several due to flooding. You can also find those at kfes12.com. Also online, we have a list of Heartland Roads uh, closed because of flooding. You'll see a red bar near the top of the page with a list of stories scrolling by. You'll find the list of flooded roads right there. Now, we are constantly updating that list, so check back often. Our flood coverage continues in just a minute for now. So here's Bob with the first forecast. Well, we still have rain across the heartland tonight, Mary Ann, but it is uh, much less than what we've had in recent nights, and that's certainly good news. Still, as we look at the satellite uh, imagery, going back uh, six hours or so, you can see the movement of it. And generally, we've got some moderate rain that's still going on across parts of the area as well. Here's the latest run of our forecast model showing additional rainfall before it comes to an end. For the most part, it's looking like tomorrow morning. And again, we're still talking about half an inch to over an inch in some parts of the area. As we go through the day tomorrow, I think for the most part, we're not going to see a lot more rain coming out of that. So that's certainly good news for us. After that, I'll have your forecast coming up in just a few minutes.